guys um, okay let me turn off the music because usually that's kind of annoying okay that's it <laughs> it's kind of abrupt hi guys so uh thanks for joining me uh i see a lot of people are here visiting from the netherlands from san francisco pasadena uh yeah cool ele elevator music uh so uh just uh, I wanted to do a live stream real quick and show you a really cool trick that I love to do. And it's always one of those things that will get people to say like, whoa. And it's uh, a parallax effect. And the par this parallax effect is going to be a little bit different because it's usually parallax effects are like a, you move, uh, like you pan. Uh, you, you move from left to right or up and down. But this one, I wanted to create a tilt effect and the tilt is usually you the camera doesn't move like this it more moves like this you see that difference uh, and, and and or like this so it actually creates a different effect from the just a normal parallax where you just like move from left to right and let me show you real quick how it is going to look we're going to be using by the way before anything if you want to in the description uh, there's the files that we're going to be using today. If you want to download them and, and follow along, you can do that. Or you can just like watch uh, from from the comfort of your homes on this uh, Sunday night, Sunday afternoon, uh, <laughs> lazy Sunday. Uh, but let me show you real quick. So this is Flinto. I just, oh, I need to change the screen. Hold on, give me one second. So let me change it to this. And okay, now we're now you're seeing my screen. Sorry that I, so uh, let me see if there's any any comments. Okay, Fr Sweden, Frankfurt, hi. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, let me show, I have two screens. Everything is going to be done with two screens and, and a couple of gestures and using Flinto. Flinto, I have it open. Let me preview what we're going to do. So we have this guy here and then while swiping, while dragging, we're going to create this effect. You see how it's, it is creating this tilt effect. It's not, it's like a parallax effect, but it's also the, 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 the uh, elements that are further away are moving down and the ones that are closer to you are moving up. So it's a pretty cool effect. Let's, let's just see it when I tap. And when I tap and, and then the, uh, the little astronaut comes back and then you can see it up and down, up, and down. There you go. So, uh, and again, and and it's we're using two gestures. So we're going to learn how to do that real quick. So let me close this because we're going to recreate it. And again, if you want to stop watching and just play with the files, just download them and stop watching. It's okay. Or just have it in the background while I'm talking. Uh, but so I'm going to save this and I'm going to close it. And now you can see here, you can see yourselves talking here. Hi from Sweden. Hi from Far Frankfurt. And I started with a sketch file. So a uh, sketch file has, let me just double check that I have everything. Yes, everything is, is good. So I uh, have a sketch file and, <clears throat> and the sketch file, I, I created one, uh, all the elements here. So all these are over here, planets and just like very basic shapes. So let me zoom in here so you can see what's going on. So these are just circles that I just put different circles and I put a big circle and then I use this circle as a, as a mask. And now it's a planet, which is pretty cool, right? And then all these circles have an actually, uh, it's have a color and then and they're blending. Oh, actually it's normal, but I group them. And then I put that blending to multiply instead of normal. So that way, let's see it in normal first. Normal is like this, but if I put a multiply, then it blends with the color a little bit better, right? And it's just like, it feels more natural. Uh, and it just multiplies the color in the background. Okay, cool. So here we have our, uh, our hero, uh, it's just like, a, and the size that I'm using is an iPad uh, landscape. Uh, and then it should move to this guy. To this guy, the little astronaut that is here is also a vector everything. Uh, and it says, oh yeah, oh yes. And <clears throat> so one thing that I did, uh, I, I first tried just exporting all of these and it works perfectly with Flinto when I export it. But then I wanted that effect where uh, 
it, you know, like that lens effect where some th things are in, in focus and some some of the things are out of focus. So what I did is I applied a Gaussian blur to the elements. So the the elements, it's it's not perfect, but you get the idea. Uh, uh, some of the elements that are further away are a little bit more blurry than the ones that are closer to you. So the ones, for example, my my depth of field is around here. Uh, my focus is around here. So these guys don't have a lot of uh, uh, Gaussian blur, but this guy has a ton of Gaussian blur. I can even add more. Boom. So I have it here. And to uh, to be able to apply the Gaussian blur, I had I was able I had to convert all of these elements into an image. That's why I duplicated the uh, artboard. I duplicated the artboard and then I turn this into a, uh, a bitmap. So, uh, and as you can see here on the layers list, you'll see that all of these are, uh, are images and they're actually from this. So on the planet six, if I were to uh, to turn it into a bitmap, just so, uh, so flatten selection, you go to layer and then flatten selection to bitmap, then it turns it into a bitmap and then you can start applying a Gaussian blur over here, as, as you see. Uh, if if it was just the elements, uh, it wouldn't. It doesn't let you up to apply a, a Gaussian blur to a group. As you can see here, the group, I am not able to apply a Gaussian blur. So that's why I had to turn it into a bitmap, uh, so to be able to have that effect. So as you can see here, now this is the the element, the artboard that we're going to use for a prototype. So this is in full focus, deep space, and then all the elements are. Some of them are out, a little bit more out of focus than the other ones. So. Uh, by the way, ask any questions on the comments and I'll try to answer. Let me see if you guys have any questions. Okay, nope. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for putting uh, where, you, where you guys are visiting us from. That's pretty cool. Oops, sorry. Uh, and Okay, so the first thing that I want to do, again, uh, Obviously, this is not where I'm not going to show you how to design this. This is uh, probably if you want to learn how to use uh, a Sketch, all the tools, then I have another course, uh, a playlist that is just on Sketch, and that will help you if you're not familiar with Sketch. Okay, cool. So now with that, now that I have this, I'm going to export to Flinto. So I'm going to go to my plugins, and first of all, I'm going to see Flinto. I don't have any file. Okay, cool. So I'm going to select this artboard which is uh, the one that has uh, the blurry images. I'm going to plugins and then send to Flinto. Boom, and then automatically the text that my device size uh, is an iPad, an iPad landscape. So yes, export only the selected artboards at 200% because I love it with a ton of resolution. And boom, automatically opens Flinto for me and I have this artboard and that's great, right? So everything is here. Uh, I believe you see here on it, it respected all on my layers list the names that I gave it on Sketch, and now I can start uh, animating them. I can start adding gestures and stuff like that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, going to duplicate this artwork. I'm going to duplicate this artwork, and I'm going to move it over here. And <clears throat> This is, you could have done this in two different ways. I could have duplicated here or duplicated in Sketch. Um, you know what? Let's actually do it in Sketch. Uh, so the, the practice that you're going to download, uh, it's everything is done on Flinto, all the animations, but I'm going to uh, actually do it differently here. So if you want to do it the first way, download the files, and, and then I'm going to save this as a different file so you can uh, also play with this way of doing it. So over here, I have deep bitmaps. I have my f initial state of my animation, and then over here, I'm going to have the the end state of my animation, the things moving, and then I'm going to connect them in Flinto. So here, I have this one, and then I'm going to rename it to moving, moved. So I'm going to start moving the elements. So here I have this guys, and then um, again, I'm going to re remind you what we're going to do here. We're going to have a tilt effect, a parallax tilt effect. It's not just moving, it's not panning, it's tilting. So the camera is moving like this, instead of like this, okay? Cool, so when you, tr when you want to do that, the elements that are further away Actually, try this at home. Try just like moving. Don't move like this. Move your neck like this. And then you're going to see that the elements that are further away from your view move down, and the elements that are closer to you, put your finger in front of you, move up. See how the finger moves up in your field of view, and the, and, and the elements that are further away move down. 
it's kind of weird, right? And anyway, but that's how it is. So let's try to do that effect. So over here, again, I have my initial state here. I'm going to move the elements. The elements that are further away have to move down just a little bit. This guy moves a little bit. I'm going to move them and I'm pressing shift and, and the arrow, the down arrow key to move them 10 pixels. And then the uh, planets that are here, I'm going to move just a little bit more around there. And then the deep space, I'm going to move it up, just 10 pixels, just a little bit. And then this guy's going to move a lot. Uh, but before we move that guy, let's move these guys. So these guys move up a little bit. Then uh, these elements, uh, let's put them that they move down just a tiny bit. And then this guy that is like super close to us, let's move it like way up. Okay, cool. So way up. And then let's change the opacity of this triangle, just like a, like, I don't know, like a like an affordable button that you can press to move. Uh, let's change the opacity to 0% because on my, on my end state, I don't want it to show. Okay, so we have all our elements here. And now what we're going to do, this is going to look a little bit crazy, but we have to move all of these elements on top of, of the other elements. And let's move them just to make sure that everything is on top. Let's move it forward. Yes, let's, I think this triangle should be below the white. Okay, there you go. Uh, here on the, my layers list, I had a mistake. So now all the elements are here. Again, we're, the, the planets are moving and then this uh, screen is coming on top of them. That's the effect we're trying to do. Okay, so now I have my both both my states where my initial state here and I have my end state here on these two artboards. So now I can export these two artboards. I'm going to export them and send to Flinto again. And then we'll automatically merge the file that we already had before. So send it and boom, now I have two uh, artboards here. I'm going to remove this artboard because I, didn't, I don't want to duplicate it. And yeah, there you go. I have both states. I have the initial state here and the end state here. The the big maps moved. Uh, so let's just start adding a gesture here on Flento. So uh, again, let me see if you have any questions here. Very rad so far. Okay, cool. Okay, so uh, let's move on to, again, ask your questions and I'll try to answer these your questions at the end, okay guys, uh, on the chat. Okay, so here I'm going to add a gesture. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to add a gesture and, and the gestures usually are like tap, double tap, uh, left swipe and all that. Let's start with an up swipe. That way we'll be able in our prototype to move it with our finger. So let's up, up swipe. And then what is the target? The target is going to be my, uh, the second uh, uh, screen, which is deep map, beat maps moved. So now see how so I created that link here. And then in here, you can even change the gesture or even add another uh, transition. Usually, uh, Flinto gives you these transitions, that, like the default transitions, like fade in, push left, pop right. But we want to create our own cool transition. So you can create your own here, a new transition. So just press on that guy. And then here, now we're in the transition designer. It looks very similar to the previous screen, but as you can see here, we have uh, different elements here. The transition designer that tells you the start and the end, and then other uh, elements here. So here, I'm going to, the first thing that I want to do, since all the animations are happening in the screen, is not a, like another screen uh, coming on, on top of it. It's just the elements in the same screen are moving. So I'm going to align the screens. As you can see here, I have the artboards. This is the artboards of the second screen, and this is the uh, this is the artboard of the uh, of the first screen. Let me move them and align them here. So that that makes it pretty easy. And now that I have aligned them, I can if I play around. There's nothing happening, right? Because right now there are no elements moving and there are no elements that are connected. To be able to do that, I have to go here to the layers list and start connecting the layers. So since, let me go, let me save this as a, a, a space move. I'm, I'm going to save my transition as a space move, which is pretty cool because then you can reuse transition. We're going to learn about that in a, in a minute. Okay, I'm going to save and exit. And again, here is my designer. Like I've designed, I move the things around and then over here, if I click on this guy and I see my gesture, I can edit the transition. And now I'm in the transition designer, animation designer. And now I can start editing this. So now I'm going to select these elements. For example, I'm going to press, I want to connect the helmet with the helmet. It starts over here and it ends over here inside the screen. By the way, you see these uh, guidelines? 
they're telling you what is in the field of view, what is going to be able to you're going to be able to see on the prototype. So that helps you uh, know what things come into the screen and come off the screen. Okay, so let's start connecting the layers. I'm going to select this guy and then con command and click here, and now I connect the layer. Boom, now those two layers are connected. Now that they're connected, I can even change the timing, the transition, and all of that. All these elements are pretty cool because you can start, uh, you can have a classic uh, fading, uh, sorry, uh, uh, ease in, ease out, and you can have a spring where things bounce. You can start playing with these elements and see how elements just like move. Let's let's play it and see how, oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> oh God. Obviously it's a little bit cheesy. Be careful with this. It's just like animate responsibly, my, my friends. So um, you have the power of these things, uh, but let's, let's, let's actually do something different here just so, so you can see. Let's super bouncy here. Okay, so now you get an idea of the things that you can do. Let's uh, let's just go to the default the spring RK4 for now, and let's uh, start. Let's keep connecting our layers. Okay, I'm going to connect this guy. I'm going to connect the background white. I'm going to connect the triangle. <clears throat> and again, what I'm doing with connecting is I'm saying uh, that the the start state and the end state, those two elements are the same. So I'm going to connect them. And I want to create, a Flinto will create a transition uh, by default. Uh, it will create um, its own transition for you. We'll connect those layers. Dun, dun, dun. This is kind of boring. Um, I can sing a song. But what, what about listening to a song while I'm doing this? Yeah, let's do that. And sketch together. Music. Here are all my files. You're, you're able to see all my files. Okay. Okay, there you go. Let's have some music while I'm doing this very, very uh, boring labor. You have to do it, but it will pay off. I'm telling you guys, once you connect these layers, it's going to be like magic. Okay, there you go. Okay, now I connected all the layers. Let's see the start and the end. <laughs> Look at that. It starts like this, and then the elements come into place. How cool is that? It created the animation for me. Okay, so now, okay, I'm going to, to go back. <laughs> Sorry. Um, now that I have all of this, uh, now I can start playing with the animation of all of these. I can shift, select all of these elements, and, I, and I'm going to make that bounce a little bit. So instead of a duration of 366 milliseconds, that's here, I'm going to make the friction less friction and more and less tension. And let's see how, just play around with it. So it will be a little bit longer, it won't be as fast, and it will be and adds a little bit of bounciness. Around there, let's see how it looks. And it's, it looks like it's too too slow, uh, but when you're controlling it with your with your finger, you actually want it to be slow because your finger can be fast. So, boom, and now I'm noticing that when it bounces, the white background the, the white background here, it's a little bit too it bounces off, and so you can see you can still keep say, seeing the background. So we're going to do something about that. I'm going to save and exit, and now I'm going to go back to my sketch file over here, and I want to make this guy. The, the white background, I want to make it a little bit bigger. That way, when it bounces, it, it stays the same. You know, it, sorry, it bounces, but it's all white in the background. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And actually, this guy, when it comes back, I want to make it smaller so it does the same where it doesn't show inside the screen. So there you go. The cool thing about this, it, the, it Flinto and Sketch connect really well. So now that I'm going to, I'm going to select these two artboards and I'm going to send them to Flinto again. And yeah, send it to Flinto and automatically updates my layer. So now my layer, look at this. Now it's big and this one is a small and I'm in Flinto and all my animations, everything is saved. So I, I don't have to come back and re redo everything. It's just like there. So let's review it. What do you think? So I'm going to press the play button and now see, now it's working. Now it's working. It probably could be a little bit better, but uh, there you go. Now I let it go. Let's go back here. Boom, baby. How cool is that? How cool is that? I'm pretty sure right now you're all saying like, oh my God, that is awesome. I'm going to go and do this and that. Hopefully you can do something and then, and then share it later, I don't know, like the comments or something. Anyway, we have it here and now we want to go back, a way to go back. And I can do, I, I'm going to do it in two ways. I'm going to add a tap uh, gesture to, to, the, to, the, to this little guy. And 
Remember I told you that you can reuse animations? That's the cool thing about this. Once you create a, a, a custom transition, you can reuse that transition. So I'm going to add a gesture to this guy, and I'm going to say tap. And then the target is going to be my first image, my first uh, the, the artboard, sorry. And then in, in the transition, I'm going to reuse this same guy. Boom. But now, since it's the opposite, I'm going to press this guy that is like the reverse. It reverses the transition. So let's play it. Let's preview it. Oops, sorry. I have to do it like this. And then I press on this guy, and then it comes back. Oh my god. How cool is that, right? I'm just reusing the transition, and it's doing it for me. And let's do it again. Let's add a gesture to this whole white background. And then this one is going to be down swipe. Down swipe, and I'm going to connect to the target, the first one, and I'm going to also do a reverse transition. So let's preview it. I swipe up here, and then I swipe down here. Oops, sorry. Something happened there. So probably I'm doing a mistake. Huh, what is going on? Oh. I didn't select the transition. Oh, uh, idiot. Okay, there you go. Now I selected the transition. Let's preview it. There you go. And now I swipe down and it does the same. Oh, I have to swipe all the way down. How oh, cool. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is awesome, right? Okay, cool. So I have to do it like this and then like that. Something cool that you can also do is uh, just to make the uh, these guys bounce a little bit. Something cool that I do is I move them around here like this. And that way, you can create a parallax effect even with these elements. So let's preview it again. See how they bounce a little bit off? <laughs> I love that. So let's do it again, just so you can see the difference. Boom, they bounce, and there's a little bit of uh, uh, offset in, in the elements, right? OK, cool. So that was it. Let's see if you guys have any questions. Again, um, I'm going to save this. Uh, I'm actually going to save it again in the same file. So now you have the, also, you, if you want, saving it. So the Dropbox link should be updated now. And you can, up, you can download this file again if you, if you had already updated before, sorry, downloaded before the live stream. OK, so we have here. And I'm going to save this guy, too. And I'm going to save it Space Parallax and 2. And I'm going to add the link to this one, too, just so you, you can see the difference if there's any. And, and that's it. Let me see if you guys have any. Can you add some sound to it? Yes, you can add some sound to it. And let me show you real quick how you can add sound. So for example, to a gesture, when you, uh, oh, sorry, I'm in, in, in Flinto. So somebody asked if I can add sound to it. Over here on this gesture, on every gesture, you can add a sound here on this guy. So let, let me go to click it. And let's see if I have space web. I don't know why would I have something with space. Um, there you go. We have a space. <laughs> I have <laughs> somehow I have a space sound in my in my computer. Okay, let's preview it. Okay, let's go back and then. Oh, see how? Let's let's go back. Oh, crap. Okay, let's preview it again. So once I activate that uh, gesture, it added a sound. So obviously you want to add a, a, a sound that makes more sense than, than, than this sense, than this uh, sound. Uh, but that's a, an easy way to do it. Let me repeat it. You select your gesture, and then you can add sound here on this little icon. Add sound. And just select a wave, uh, an MP3 on an, uh, a WAV file, and it will add a sound for you. OK, cool. So let me see if you have uh, any other questions. Oh my god, what is that? So I'm going to do this. OK. Uh, let me go back to, by the way, let me go back to this guy. Okay. <laughs> there you go. So I have the question and somebody's asking, how can I pass this to Xcode? Uh, do you know if the developer uses this as a reference? Uh, that is that is the holy grail of the uh, prototyping tools, right? Right now, there is a prototyping tool called Anima. And I recommend it because they uh, export Xcode and they uh, export yeah, sorry, Swift. I think it, it exports Swift language, and it also it exports at Android. So I will recommend using Anima. And also, there's another tool which is called um, what is called what is it called? A sketch Draw. Oh, God, I don't know. If somebody 
knows about this, it's it's, it's going to be cool. Uh, it's another one. I, I'll I'll try to do another one on that. I, I cannot remember. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you learned uh, some a, a little bit on on, on this uh, little live stream and download the files. Uh, leave a comment. Give a thumbs up and and all that good stuff. So um, let me put some music before I say goodbye. And oh, come on. Music, 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 music. A little bit of elevator music for you guys. And thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. Besitos para todos. Adios. Adios.